Hey, Bob. I can see you now. Can you see me? Can you hear me fine? Could you hear me before? Well, that's good. That was really annoying before. <laughs> really annoying. So now I, I don't have my notes with me. So I'm going to have to look everything back up again. Oh. That's good because I couldn't see anybody typing or anybody chatting so that made it kind of awkward to continue writing or talking when I can't see what's being said. So I was just checking things out. Hey Joe. How are you going? Yes, Jody. <laughs> That's my name. If you didn't know yet, that's my name. And you can call me it anytime. The Highway of Tears is a sad thing. It's a murder thing. It's It came up in another live stream we were talking about. So I thought we'd talk more about it. That's all I got this evening. Hello, Michael. Oh no, I prefer you to use my name, it, Joe. I totally prefer that you use it when you're here. My screen name is kind of awkward using it. I answer to that. You can call me Jody. But every time I see your name, I'm always laughing inside because that's what people call me too here, right? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Hello. I want to be able to say your name, but that's kind of hard. At Adria. If I said it wrong, I apologize. Yes, I wanted to have a stream talking about the Highway of Tears up here in British Columbia because it's quite fascinating and scary. And it takes everything away from all the drama that's been happening in the last few days. Instead we can talk about murder. The hi What's that about? The Highway of Tears. I'm gonna read what it is in a minute. It's up here in northern British Columbia, and it's a stretch of highway where uh, women go missing and murdered, and most of them happen to be Aboriginal. And they think it's uh, on the highway, it's, it's an active highway of serial killers, basically. Basically. And only one one crime has been solved from there which is connected to a serial killer who previously has died a few years ago go hey donna 
Welcome to the murder stream. <laughs> it's it's so timely for the time of year, I know. We're waiting for uh Yep. The bodies were found on the highway. Some are not. Uh but there have been Hey Pashi. People have been found. Well, obviously their bodies have been found, some of them. So I am actually going to read what it is and get started. So the Highway 16 is the British Columbia, Canada section of Yellowhead Highway. The highway closely follows the path of the Northern BC aligned alignment of the Canadian National Railway. The number six, we're detectives. Yeah, we're not murderers, <laughs> we're detectives. I only found out about this like this year and being a Canadian, it's kind of shocking that this is not actually talked about as much and kind of needs more, you know? We need to talk about it more. Anyway, the number 16 was first given to the highway in 1942 and originally the route that the highway took was more to the north of today's highway. <laughs> yeah, go Blue Jays. Yes, Bob, it's in Canada. It's in British Columbia, in Northern British Columbia. It's a highway up in British Columbia. Relax, relax, my French. Canadian friend. We are talking about in Canada. Um, so, a series of murders and disappearance have given the stretch between Prince Rupert and Prince George the name Highway of Tears. I like it too. <laughs> you're not that safe, Bob. <laughs> yeah, but you're safe from this. So, <laughs> hey, Chaos Kitty. Don't hate America. You should like where you're from, even if there's things wrong, because there's things wrong up here in Canada, too. I'm good, Kitty. I'm good. How are you doing? We're talking about the Highway of Tears. That's right, there's things wrong everywhere. Good, doing good. We're talking about a stretch of highway where multiple murders have taken place. And yeah, it's up here in North, Northern British Columbia and it's a little bit freaky. So if you get scared easy, I'm sorry. So this stretch of highway since 19, <laughs> it is, it's Bob's fault. <laughs> it's Bob's fault. It's always those French Canadians' faults. <laughs> that is a song. In 1969, numerous women have gone missing along the, do you guys prefer miles or kilometers? It's about 450 miles section of highway. Uh, RCMP lists the number of missing or murdered women at 18, but Aboriginal organizations speculate the number ranges into the 40s. 13 out of the 18 recorded victims were teenagers, while 10 out of the 18 were of Aboriginal descent. In 2006, RCMP launched Project EPANA. It's a special investigation on the disappearances up on the Highway of Tears. Yes, but due to cutbacks, things have changed, right? Now, that's what the Highway Tears is. Did you know the distance between Newfoundland and British Columbia is greater than the distance from Newfoundland to France? Our country is legit longer than the ocean. That is crazy. Oops. Yeah, there's been a documentary done on this. And most of them have been um, Aboriginal. 
So, um, natives, as in Aboriginal people, women, and teenagers are the majority of that were taken. It's Bob's fault. So, in 1969, at Williams Lake, Gloria Moody, 26, was leaving a bar in Williams Lake, and her body was found in the woods, a cattle ranch that was 10 kilometers away. Yeah, I, I, I basically don't go walk out on the highway by yourself, and don't meet strangers in bars. Um, let's see, Monica Jack was 12 years old. Uh, her fate has been unknown for 17 years. Mm -hmm. In June 1995, forest workers found skeletal human remains in a ravine off a logging road. Uh, from there, they found Monica's bike. Dental records and DNA tests confirmed her identity. In December 2014, a serial rapist named Gary Taylor Handlin was charged with the, mo the murder of Monica Jack. An 11-year-old girl also named Catherine Mary Herbert, who has been speculated as being a victim of the Highway of Tears. And they got DNA to get him. So she was 12 and the youngest. But I have like a long list of women. Yeah, it dates that far back to 1969 to 2011, and most of the cases are unsolved. Most of them. I watched uh, this one. I'm trying to find her name here. She vanished. She had gone up to one lake with her friends camping for the evening, and the next day when everyone packed up to leave, she was packing up to leave alone so everyone had left her and she disappeared and she's never been found um but what's her name Ooh, i'm trying to find it anyway so in 2009 yeah the documentary the documentary is on uh youtube <laughs> Do you like doing live streams on this? Yeah, well, it's really interesting. So, in 2009, police co um, converged on property in Isles Prairie, a rural Prince George, to search for the remains of Nicole Hoare, a young tree planter who went missing on Highway 16 in 2002. The property was once owned by Leland Vincent Switzer, okay, who is currently serving a prison sentence for a secondary degree murder of his brother. Uh, the RCMP also searched the property for other missing women from the Highway Tears. However, nothing came from that. But in 2012, they announced a link between the murders and deceased United States criminal Bobby Jack Fowler. Bobby Jack Fowler. His DNA was found on the body of Colleen McMillan, one of the presumed victims. So, investigators first compiled a DNA profile from the perpetrator in 2007, but technology wasn't available at the time. Which kind of sucks with a lot of murders. We have to wait for technology to catch up to these people. And Bobby Jack Fowler died, but he is also a strong suspect in killing both Gail Wales and Pamela Darlington in 1973. Um, and he is believed to have killed as many, many as 10 or possibly 20 other victims. Um, and several of the murders that took place after Fowler's arrest in 1995. So then there was Canadian serial killer, serial, serial killer Cody Lechbrokoff, and he was convicted of the murder of Laureen Don Leslie in 2010. Yes, Mac, we are. We're talking about the Highway of Tears. So, Bobby Jack Fowler is alleged rapist serial killer in the United States and Canada. He died in prison of lung cancer in Oregon in 1996. 
Uh, he was a transit construction worker. He is known to travel extensively through North America. And that's how he was able to do what he did. We can hear you, John, or Mac Johnson. Is it Mac Johnson? You like Christmas stories of serial killers. I don't know. I don't know Christmas stories of serial killers. <laughs> yeah, it's a few people. Yeah, I was wondering if it was my Johnson. Did you have to change it? Did someone catch you? How come you changed it to Mac Johnson? You like to change things up. <laughs> don't we all, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, we are talking about your rolling stone. Wherever you laid your hat was your home. So some of some of this, what is his name? Fowler's murders included. Um, Sheila Swanson, 19, and Melissa Sanders, 17, were last seen making calls from a pay phone near the Beverly Beach State Park where they'd been camping. They were later discovered in 1992 in October in Oregon. I know these things are so intriguing. In January 1995, Jennifer Esten and Cara Lees, both 16, were seen walking uh, on Northwest 56th Street in Newport, Oregon, towards the Highway 101. After leaving the fr a friend's house, and their strangled bodies were discovered in February 1995 in a logged wood area. It's really... I always wonder what compels these people. Honestly, like, what compels them? Because... Like, to kill something, take the life out of something? You gotta be a little bit... I don't want to say not just simply deranged, but you have to have a lack of a whole lot of functions. So what was important about this Highway of Tears is that they think that, um, because there were so many Aboriginal, yeah, empty, Aboriginal women, and there wasn't a lot of um, press or uh, there wasn't a lot of, you know, investigation into them that they thought this was a little bit racist because uh, when a, if a white girl had died, um, there was a big hoopla over it. But every time an Aboriginal woman disappeared, it, they there wasn't. The documentary is really worth seeing, but, you know, keep the light on at night. And a lot were hitchhiking. <laughs> which I've noticed, but at the time in the 1970s, I think hitchhiking was a pretty common thing. Even in the 80s, it was common. I think it's less common now. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, hopefully you wouldn't hitchhike nowadays. Not all bodies were found, either. There was something else I find I'm trying to... Find it because there was actually one family who actually disappeared. It was a whole entire family a father, a mother, and two kids were offered a job and they were last um, heard from at a payphone off of the, the highway, somewhere off of the Highway of Tears, and they were never found again uh, or seen again. I can't find it. Yeah, I wouldn't be hitching either. I would never be hitching, Mac Johnson. You know, I would never be caught hitching. And when forensic, forensics, you know, catch up, it's...
it helps, but you can imagine there's a whole entire highway, and it's a long stretch of highway, 450 miles. Uh, it's a long stretch of highway to uh, have serial killers operating on. He had to hitchhike after a friend put me out of his car 80 miles away from home because the girl he liked didn't agree to date him. Wow. Wow, that's really nice. Some people are pretty, pretty, pretty fantastic to do stuff like that. Take it you never saw that person again. 80 miles away, that's, that's just crazy. I'm back. Yeah, friends in brackets. Friends. We gotta take care of each other, even if we don't like each other. And like, that's so dumb. Don't, you don't agree with dating him, so he's gonna kick you out of the car. Not you who didn't agree to date him, but your friend did. Who's your friend with you? When you got kicked out, like it was both of you together, or just you alone. Some people. Some people. Yeah. Some people. I'm wondering where the captain is. I told him I was coming on today. Oh, oh. Men sometimes don't take rejection very well. I've noticed. You can't make someone like you. If they don't, I sound like a song. I always thought it was funny growing up. <laughs> I've never had to hitchhike. No, you can't force love, can you? You can't make someone be attracted to you if they don't see you that way or look at you that way. Unless you have duct tape, right? <laughs> right. In Newport. With this, uh, this Fowler guy. Is that what you're talking about? This. The one on the Oregon coast. Oh, yes. That was by this dude who was arrested. You know, I don't know why his head just, the name just went right out of my brain. Yeah, where did I put it? Let me find it. Oh, give me a second. Yeah, Bobby Jack Fowler. There he is. Okay. Oh, so. Yeah, Fowler. Spelt like that. He was born in 1939 in Texas. He died at age 66 in Oregon State Penitentiary. <laughs> uh, victims, one confirmed up to 20 suspected uh, sp uh, the span of killings ranged from 1973 into early 1996 between Canada and Oregon. Um, during his travels, he developed an extensive criminal rep record, and it's known to have committed several violent crimes, an alcohol, amphetamine, and methamphetamine abuser, he had a criminal record that included attempted murder, sexual assault, and firearms. Uh, in 1969, he was charged with murdering a man and woman in Texas, uh, but was only convicted of discharging a firearm within city limits. But they were regretting that. Fowler also spent time in Tennessee prison for sexual assault and attempted murder because, in the words of an investigator, he tried... He tied up a woman, beat the hell out of her with her own belt, and covered her with brush and left her to die. Yeah. 
He liked to travel far and wide and beat up old cars, frequently picked up hitchhikers, spent time in bars and motels. I would believe the women he came into contact who were hitching and hanging out in bars wanted to be sexually assaulted. So he thought they wanted to be assaulted. Hello. Hello. I'm live streaming, so we're having conversation, so just so you know. Okay. I'll stay over here. No, just so you know why I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, something's wrong if you think the women who get in the car want to be sexually assaulted. Hi, class. Who is that? Hey, Gary. No, mom's not here. I don't live with my mom. <laughs> they asked if my mom was here. No, that's not my mom. Yeah. Bob says, um, I'm not a psycho. I'm actually talking to people. People are really here listening to me. <laughs> She's not listening to me now. <laughs> Bob, it's your fault. She's got a little bit of a hearing problem. So, Bob, Bob here says, I'm not psycho. That I am talking to us, the people there in the chat, and that they are real. Oh. And then he goes, are we? <laughs> are we? Yeah. See? <laughs> That's debatable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, they can hear you. But they can't see you, but they can hear you. They asked if, one asked if my mom came home, but I said, no, she's not my mom. <laughs> it's your big sister. I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to my sister. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can hear her if you can hear me. Anyway. Yeah. He is suspect person for at least 16 murders between Canada and Oregon. And like I said, one was on the highway of tears. Everyone says hi. Yeah, his DNA, like I said, was found on Colleen McMillan, one of the presumed victims from the Highway of Tears. So he was involved... In 1995, he was arrested following an act, an incident which involved a woman jumping out of a Tides Inn motel in Newport, Oregon, motel window with rope still tied to her ankle. She survived the attack and reporter reported it to the police. Is there? He was convicted of kidnapping, first degree, attempted rape, and first degree sexual abuse, and first degree coercion, assault, and fourth degree, and menacing. He was sentenced to 16 years and three months with the possibility of parole, but he died of lung cancer, and he was cremated. So that was, that was Bobby Jack Fowler. Like in 1996, how old was I? I was 18. So, like, I wouldn't have known any of this stuff going on. I wouldn't have had any idea about all of this. You were 19, yeah. You're like, you're in your own world back, back then. Oh, Bob, you're just a baby. You're just a baby. Oh, that sounds lovely. I have a niece who's 18, so. Let's see, can I, yeah. That's all I've got for jo Bobby Jack. But once you open the rabbit hole of serial killers, it just gets... Pops till first diapers. Oh, Bob. RCMP say that the killers may never be caught with the missing women in BC. There's also a 48 hours episode about this too.
There you go, Bob. You can have a wrench. <laughs> Look out, everyone. Bob's going to get you. <laughs> Don't mess with Bob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want me, do you want me to look up Gary Ridgeway now? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, Bob, remember that Donna loves you. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> Gary Ridgeway. I think I've heard about that. <laughs> oh yeah, I have heard of him. Yes, he is awful. The Green River Killer. Is he dead yet? Convicted of 49, confessed to 71, presumed to be at least 90 plus. Victims. Between 1980 and 1990, Ridgeway is believed to have murdered at least 71 women near Seattle and Tacoma. Bob needs a queen. I'm available. <laughs> he has a high score. He has a very high score. No kidding. They do, like, I think they should be able to, when these people die, take their brains and research them. Like, what's... Ugh. The court statement, he later reported that he killed so many, he lost count. A majority of the murders occurred between 82 and 84. This is just a little thing. Aww. Yeah, we don't get a lot of people in here because we don't clickbait. And we're not talking about Trisha. All that we could. <laughs> That's always a good, a good topic. Anyway, they were the victims were believed to be sex workers or runaways picked up along Pacific Highway South. Yeah, it's like um, John Wayne Gacy. Uh, putting everyone under the house and his family like could smell it but they didn't know what he was doing and had no idea what was happening. Her trail of tears all the way to federal prison. And no, it's okay, you can do that. Oh, sorry, I'm talking. <laughs> You home by yourself? No, Paula's in there. Um, who started a boys' foundation? You mean Gacy? Or do you mean, yeah, Gacy started a boys' foundation? Yeah, he's creepy. I watched a movie. I can't remember what actor was playing him, but I watched a movie about him. He, oh. Ooh, he's gross. There was something about him that was just... And it's not simply that he dressed up like a clown, but it was what he did to these people, uh, these boys. It was the perversion, right? He was so perverted. So, let's see. The Green River dumped the bodies in the woods. Two confirmed and two suspect victims found in Port Oregon. Bodies are left in clusters, sometimes posed, usually nude. Oh, well, this is gross. He would return to the bodies and sexually, ha oh, sexually assault them. Oh, oh. So he was into necrophilia. Oh. Gacy? Yeah. Kind of gross, eh? It makes you really question whether it's worth getting in a relationship or staying single. Mm. 
Yeah, there's definitely more than mental health issues there. For sure. There's some kind of perversion or something missing. Something's definitely missing. It's ginger ale, if you're wondering. So, yeah, blind torture and kill guys is a creepy freak, too. They're all kind of creepy. And I always think it's good I can't understand their thinking, because if I could understand it, I'd be like them, right? Yeah, BTK. But they all kind of have this look about them that's empty and dark. Like, I'm pretty sure people sense... <laughs> sensed it around them, yeah. Yeah, the eyes are like void. What about Richard Ramirez? Psycho. Mm. He had a lot of self, like you could see he really liked himself, like he really believed he was Richard Ramirez really was in love with himself, but violent, very violent. I'm getting you all ready, pumped up for your holidays. I think, Bob, you might be onto something. Yeah, I don't understand why they do that too. They get like um some weird obsession about men like that. I don't know. It was just a topic I decided to talk about this evening, Matt Johnson. I'm leaving tomorrow, so So I thought I'd leave you with some nightmares. <laughs> Yeah, they're evil or they really like um, going to my Nana's house. We're leaving in the morning early. It's supposed to start snowing. Yep, that's right. They remember every victim, every location. They remember everything with detail, and most of them won't tell you. No, I'm not going to live stream at my Nana. She doesn't have the internet. She's 92. That's why I think they should be able to, when they pass away or they die, they should be able to take the brain out and examine the brain. No, oh, thank you. Me too. I think it will be a nice trip. I'll take video like I always do. Now that I freaked you out sufficiently. <laughs> I'm not going up that way. To I'm not going up towards the Highway of Tears, but I am going up the highway. Bundy. A lot of those men hate women. They really hate the women. Something happened in their childhood and they hate women. Some just have sexual perversions towards children, boys, whatever. I mean, there's men who hate women who aren't killers. <laughs> I'm not going up alone, so yeah, I'm going to freak out. Oh no! <laughs> Yep. 
Yeah. Some wish all the women were like their mothers, too. This is true. And they want to kill their moms over and over again. It's like uh, the movie Psycho. Which was Psycho. We're watching a repeat. Yeah, but it's like women. Women look at their fathers and look for men like that. <laughs> exactly, Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ed Gein. Oh, so much has been based off of Ed Gein. Oh, yeah. See? Silence of the Lambs. Mom, mom. <laughs> There's another one that was really, really creepy. Um, happened in California in a pig, uh, I want to say a pig farm. Or chicken farm, the chicken farm. His last name was Northcott. And he killed little boys and kidnapped them and killed them on his property. And they actually had to change the name of the town. This happened in the early 1920s. And they changed the name of the town in California because of it. It was so bad. <laughs> That's why you like me, Gary. <laughs> Gary likes Kitty. <laughs> Gary, you wouldn't know until it was too late. You've never heard of that one. Okay, well, I'm gonna creep you out some more then. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Uh, yes, here we go. I don't know why I did that again. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. The, the Wineville Chicken Coop Murders, known as the Wineville Chicken Murders, a series of abductions and murders of young boys that occurred in the city of Los Angeles and in River Country, California, between 1926 and 1928. <laughs> um, do you remember the movie called Changeling with Angelina Jolie? It's based on this. So, in 1926, Gordon Stewart Northcott, a 19-year-old Canadian chicken ranch owner, no? Okay. Uh, took his 13-year-old nephew, Stanford Clark, from the boys' home in Canada. After arriving in Wineville, California, uh, he beat and abused him. His, yes. Stanford's older sister, 19-year-old Jessie Clark, visited Stanford, who was 15 at the time in Wineville. She was concerned about his welfare. At the time, Stanford told her that he feared for his life. One night while Northcott was asleep, Jesse learned that Stanford and Northcott had killed four boys in his ranch. Jesse returned to Canada about one week after the discovery. Oh, it gets worse. Once in Canada, Jesse informed the American Council there about Northcott's crimes. Oh, yes, it's pretty gross. Uh, they captured him. So they found three shallow graves exactly where Clark had stayed there in Wineville. It's not called Wineville anymore, by the way. It was changed. That these graves did not um, contain complete bodies, but only parts of the bodies. During testimony from Stanford Clark and his sister Jessie, they learned that the bodies had been dug up by Gordon Northcott and his mother, Sarah Louise Northcott, on the evening of August 4th, 1928, a few weeks before Stanford was taken into protective custody. Northcott and his mother had taken the bodies out to the desert area where they were most likely burned in the night. So, evidence found in the graves consists of 51 body parts of human anatomy, bones, blood. Ooh, that's kind of scary. So, Wineville changed his name to Miraloma. So it's now called Miraloma.
Um, that would freak me out too. I'm trying to find where this case is. Okay, Walter Collins was a. That's pretty freaky. Uh, Nine-year-old Walter, Walter Collins was abducted from his home in Lincoln Heights, Los Angeles in 1928. His mother, Christine Collins, uh, and the police believe the enemies of Walter Collins seniors had abducted Walter. Wow, it was a closed case for 20 years. Nope, see, I've, I've sufficiently freaked you out. Um, Walter Collins Dear's disappearance received worldwide uh, attention. They made that movie called Changeling with it. For five Oops. months after his disappearance, a boy claiming to be Walter was found in Illinois. And they tried, the police tried to convince Walter's mother that this was her son. And she kept saying, this is not my son. And the police just wanted to brush everything under the table and say, no, this is your son. And they tried to make her out like she was completely crazy. And when they arrested this Northcott guy, he said that he had killed Walter Collins, but he kept, like, leading her on. Everyone's looking at me, yeah. Is the dryer going to be an issue? It, no. Yeah. Well, this is, like, corrupt mm -hmm. California, right? The police system was totally corrupt in the 20s. They even put his mother into a psychiatric ward because they didn't want to deal with the fact that she knew that this little boy was not her son. Uh, I'm sorry about that sound. Mm-hmm. Yes. And this, um... Uh, Christine Collins believed that her son was still alive like she didn't accept that he had been killed but he had been killed and most likely by this Northcott guy yes yeah, sorry that's a dryer but it's done now yes there was a movie called the changeling with Angelina Jolie <laughs> that thing needs oil they know they're gonna fix it <laughs> It's getting fixed. <laughs> it's getting fixed. Yeah. So that's the wine bill chicken coop murders. Like he was pretty sadistic because he was abusing his nephew. Uh, but his mother was helping him, which shows you the disturbing relationship between the killer and... Uh, killers and their mothers because the mother tried to he was always defending him even though she knew he was abusing boys knew he was kidnapping boys helped him get rid of the bodies he stuck the boys in the chicken coop that he kidnapped and abused them in the chicken coop coop he also had the stanford his nephew uh participate in the murders and the crimes um yeah that was like pretty demented yeah, go watch, go watch that. There's, I think there's another movie about it too. Let me just look. Uh, oh no, I went too far. Yeah, no, it's just in the Changeling movie. There's been no other movies done about it but The Changeling. It's an Angelina Jolie movie. She plays the mother. It was directed by Clint Eastwood. I think it's called The Changeling because the police tried to pawn off this abandoned boy on the mother and the mother's like, this isn't my kid. And one of the reasons she knew was because her son, her son had been circumcised and the boy that they gave her hadn't been. Moms know. Moms know. You can't fool a mom after five months. A kid doesn't change that much after five months. Not a nine-year-old. It's crazy. Oh, wow, yes, they do. <laughs> My 
Mine didn't. Mine didn't go from circumcised to uncircumcised. Look up Christmas. What is that? I will look it up. Christmas gen tangia I don't even know how to say that, was a possible, possibly fictitious German bandit and serial killer of the 16th century. He reportedly murdered 964 individuals starting in his youth at 13, over a 13 year old period, from 1580, 1568 to 1581. He has a very high score. There's a lot of big uh, origins. Southwest of Cologne, Germany. For about seven years, Christman lived in a cave mine complex some distance away from Bergkissel in a wooden upland mountain area called Frasberg. From there, he had a good view over the roads between the Tier Metz. Dietenhof and Lutzenberg land. Yo, 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 Captain, you finally showed up. The cave complex is described as being very cleverly built, just like an ordinary house inside with cellars, rooms, and chambers, and all household goods that have ought to be belonging in the house. Oh. Well. Well, you're here. And we're creeping everybody out. <laughs> Let me see. Ooh. Shortly after he took up residence at Frasper, Christman serial killers is a topic. You're like, what did I just walk into? <laughs> Christman met an intended victim, the young daughter of a uh, copper in Poppert. <laughs> she was traveling the tier. You're going to have to go back in the beginning of the stream <laughs> to meet her brother. He changed his mind and ordered her underneath death threats to come and live with him. He made her swear she would never betray him. For the next seven years, she served his sexual wants. Whenever he went out to find a new victim, he bound and chained her and she could not escape. He fathered six children with her. But at birth, he killed them, pressing in their necks. Oh, my word. No, this is Christman Ginin Perternigia. I, I can't say his name. He's from the uh, 16th century. We've already been through a few other people. And now we're on to this psycho. He has the highest death toll so far at 964. He used to hang up their bodies and stretch them out. Then we made their, them move. That is awful. Germans sure create a lot of crazies. He kept a dead diary which he detailed the murders. Yes, there you go. There you go. He kept a diary as well as a tally of the loot gained from them. The diary was found among his possessions. He readily admitted the murders, adding that if he had reached his goal of a thousand victims, he would have been satisfied with that number. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty sick. And that's a really high... Yeah, he just wanted an even thousand. I mean, what? that's not too much to ask, right? That's, that, I'm pretty speechless with that. 
Oh, in the 1707 publication, Christian Gnipperda, what have your certain name, is for the first time credited with eating his victims in general, not only his own children. Yeah, exactly, splurge. What's wrong with 101, you know? Reach your goals and then just go right past those goals to new goals. So he ate his victims too. They get super chats then. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Donna, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, he was on a quest to fulfill a prophecy. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. How does it feel to have the power of the wrench, Captain? You're joining Bob. The devil made you do it. That's what they all say. They all say the devil made him do it. You didn't notice, huh? I smashed you on the head as soon as you walked in the door. Boom. You got wrenched. And I'm happy to say we're 57 minutes in and nobody has come in to disturb us. Like most streams, someone shows up at some point causing a fuss, trolling. Okay, we started with uh, the Highway of Tears up here in northern British Columbia. It's what, it 450 kilometers of a highway where mostly Aboriginal women have begun missing. It's, they think it's a functioning highway of serial killers. We went to one who was caught and died in jail and once forensics caught up, he solved one case that there was one, I can't even speak now. Then we went to the Green River Killer. Then we went to the Chicken Coop killings. Yes, Highway 16. And then we went to somebody else. And now we're here. We go quite fast through these things. Hmm. Yep. And if you're interested, there is a documentary and a 48 hours special on the Highway of Tears. <laughs> no, 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 Pashi. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. His name was Chris, it was Chris Mann, not Christmas. It was M A N. Chris Mann. Which kind of interesting. With that really, really hard last name. The Germany does produce a lot of weirdos. All right. It's the barley and hops. Have you been drinking? Oh, who do we have here? Dean Cor Coral. Do you eat sauerkraut at this time of year? Was it a good dinner? Dean Coral. Oh, okay. I'm just reading it. Well, he died, so that's good. Dean Arnold Carroll, serial killer with accomplices. Hoity-toity snobbery. I like that hoity-toity. Crimes became known as the Houston Mass Murders. 
came to light after Henley, after Henley shot fatally Carol, so his accomplice shot him. His victims were typically lured to a succession of addresses in which he resided between 1970 and 73 as an offer of a party or a lift. They were restrained by force or deception, and they were killed by either strangulation or shooting by a 22 caliber pistol. Him and his accomplice buried 17 of their victims in a rented boat shed. Four other victims were buried in, buried in a... Buried? Buried. Buried. In a woodland near Lake Sam... Rayburn. One further victim was buried in the beach in Jefferson County. He was known as the Candy Man and the Pied Piper because he and his family had owned and operated a candy factory in Houston Heights. He had been known to give out free candy. Yeah, well that just, yeah. The Candy Man can... He served in the army. That is awful. Awful. Would you like to discuss Robert Picton? I don't know who Robert Picton is. I will have to look it up. I do know who this is. The pig farmer. Oh, hey. My, oh. My battery's gonna die. <laughs> Mac Johnson. Yep, that's right, he was the pig farmer here in Coquitlam. Poor Coquitlam. You're right. I have to close down the computer because my battery is dying, so you're gonna have to plug you in. <laughs> I can't do murders anymore because I have to plug you in or, or else you're gonna die. Literally, you're gonna die. I'm going to murder you. They are the batteries. Now I have to sit on the floor until the batteries done and I think my laptop is out of batteries. Yep, I have no batteries in my laptop. <sighs> no murdering you. Yes, the pig farmer. Captain, you can help me with this now that I don't have the computer in front of me. Uh, he lives about, it was about 20 minutes away from here, 30 minutes away from here. And he had a pig farm and he fed his victims to the pigs on his property. Well, the washing machine is right outside my door and I walked right past it. So, that's what you're listening to. Yep, in Port Coquitlam. It was a big, big, big deal. If you're not careful, my Johnson, I'll murder you. I slept in wet hair. I don't really like it. We can change subjects now if you don't want to talk about murder anymore since, you know, it gets creepy after a while. Yeah, Google his picture. He was a pretty creepy guy, even when they caught him. You can even see a video of him in the interrogation room uh, that they released. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that meant it was not balanced. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, that's a good idea, Pashi. Serial Killer Saturday. I know that uh, Randy and B talk about the murder, murders and stuff, but 
we could do serial killers. Because there's so many weird guys. I ain't got no wine today. Yeah, it's all balance. It happens. <laughs> they got some pretty sick ones in England. Whoa. Did I miss something? Nope, I didn't miss something. Yes, we do go by good manners. I didn't see it, so I can't see it on my phone. Whatever it was, I didn't see it. <laughs> you need a wrench. I can't give you a wrench because I'm not on the computer anymore. Yes, Rose. And Butt West. I think you spelled that wrong. Bert West. <laughs> There was them, and there was the the Mira, I, Mira Hindley and I and something that killed all those kids and left them out on the moors. Oh, I didn't see what the comment was. It's probably it. It doesn't matter at this point because I didn't see what it was. Um, I think you know what my standards are. Oh, no. Thanks for clarifying, Johnson, but no. Both are dead now, yeah. And they were both pretty, pretty sick. Really? Solitary candle. I'm back. Sorry about that. It paused. All right, I see. I'm back. Yeah, I got it. It's me. It's been acting up tonight, and I can see I'm all fuzzy too. Sorry, I'm back. You have to behave, Johnson. You remember. Oh, I can't unban him. I'm not on the computer. I'm on my. I'm on my phone, I can't do anything from here. And if I leave my phone to go to the computer, my phone's gonna die, so. I'm sorry, I can't do anything right now. That I, yeah, I don't think I can. Oh, maybe I can, okay. Are you unbanned, Johnson? Are you gonna behave? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, you should be there. Saddle worth more. It's pretty sick. There's also the... Um, I can imagine... Oh, I can imagine it's a creepy place now. It's like the... Um, we can do this another Saturday. The Ken and Barbie murders up here. The couple who killed girls, but they even killed, the wife killed her own sister. So, we just have to be vigilant against the, um, the real trolls. <laughs> yes, the Bernardos. Yes. Creepy. sick people Ken and Barbie they were named Ken and Barbie after their murders that they committed does she have kids now she's probably changed her her name and everything and I don't know I don't know if I would have let her out I really don't know if I would have done that
the brothers, the Menendez brothers? Do you mean them? Are they both married in prison, the Menendez, Menendez brothers? Ding, ding, yeah. Mm. They need to run, Joe Henley and Brady. Isn't it Ian Brady, Brady just die? Yeah, one's married to the Menendez brothers. I do think, like we were saying earlier, it's weird the women that choose to get married to these men who are convicted proven killers and yet these women uh, get really obsessed and start communicating and falling in love and want to have a relationship with them yes Brady died this year not so it's not so it's Uh, I think they did suffer from abuse. I don't know the extent of the abuse. At least there was, like, mental and emotional abuse, but I don't know if they were physically abused, Captain. Um, but it was, it was a very unbalanced family situation. Yeah, Manson died. No, there's never an excuse. Nope. We should have tougher laws. But unfortunately, we're imperfect. I'm always like, just make sure you, if something happens to you, you get yourself some DNA. DNA. That's true, Johnson. He never murdered. He implanted the idea and sent out the orders, but he didn't touch a single hair on anybody's head. Yep, they lack empathy. They have no restraint. They usually have some kind of perversion sexually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could imagine. Could you imagine what would have happened back in the 1800s when Jack the Ripper was active? Had they caught him? I think they were spoiled brats, but I also thought that they... They're lacking in empathy, too. Because they were both old enough to walk away from their parents. Like, they weren't minors. They were adults. Or near to enough to be adults. That's right, he wouldn't make the front news. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Pretty strange. Pretty strange. It's just as strange as people faking cancer. Faking cancer and deliberately misleading. There's something wrong there. Yes, some do think he was aristocracy. Some thinks he was a doctor. Some think there's like all these people that could be suspects, but, but even if they know who he was, they're not gonna release it. I don't know how a person fakes sickness. I really don't. Especially that kind of sickness. And it's not the first case. There was a lady who got arrested, I don't want to say in Canada, but she too ran a scam. Shaving her head and everything. And she got arrested and she's in jail now for scamming. Um, and saying she had stage four cancer. It's serious. Mm. Ooh, Munchausen Mondays. I think it's more than Munchausen's though. 
I think some really do it because they're, um, oh gosh, what's the word? I want to say manipulators, but you know. About four years for scamming. Really? People are, okay, I came across many scams getting involved in animal rescue, so many excuses and illnesses for collecting money. With animals? So they abuse the animals looking for sympathy and money? Trying to rescue animals? Or saying we rescue animals, give us money? Yeah, I don't understand. What's wrong with just going out and working? Go work. Earn your money. Be proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah, we know, Johnson. Yes, we all have been watching the last few days. I don't know if I would even donate, to be honest. If someone told me someone was uh, had no food, and... um. I'd be like, okay, go shopping and bring them food. If they say no, just give me the money, I'm like, no. See, because if you're hungry, you'll just take whatever food it shows up at your door. I don't know what happened with our values and morals, but it's getting more and more degraded as we go on. And this whole scandal ain't over. Captain's being very quiet. Yeah. Well, to be honest, who gives somebody, like this is just all I've gathered, who gives someone video game, video games who doesn't have the of the video games? That's weird. That was the first thing that made me go, what? Since I'm late to the party? Why would you give someone video games when they don't have a video console or they can't afford the video console? That's weird. No, it, you're right. It's You can't throw money at a problem. It's not the solution. If someone is hungry, then I'd rather give them the food that they need and not cash. It is a good question. When it came up the other day, I was like, wait a second. This lady is dying of stage 4 cancer. Someone shows up with video games, but she doesn't own a video game console. So you're going to raise money for this console or go buy this console or fix it or whatever their story was? Come on. And how many women of that age? She's like four years older than me. That's got to say something. Oh, they do have a scam going. The Cam Pervin Elvis channel. Yeah, I watched, okay, we're going to get a troll in here sooner or later. Uh, I watched the two streams in the morning from our BFF. Really? That's the thing, if a homeless person doesn't want the food you offer him but the money, they're scamming. When I was in Finland, we had a lot of people sitting on the street begging from a particular country. And if you were to go buy them food, they did not want it. They want your money. You're on batteries. Oh. Oh, poor captain. Yeah. Chats go by so fast, so I don't get to, like, say much when I'm in those chats where I saw everything, but... It's upsetting when you see someone attacking Uber, who is sick. <laughs> you just hold down the fort and make sure no creepies come in. Well, when they opened up the EU to some more countries, they let all those particular people in who sit on the side of the street begging 
and they all get in a van together and get out together and they have lots of money. Yeah. We had a lady, me and my sister, we went to Riga and we were sitting at a park bench and this lady was asking us to pay her bills for her medical because we were Westerners and we were like, we don't have money just because we're white and from the West. I mean, we, we don't have that kind of money to pay people's bills. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I have to work for my money. Other people need to work for their money. I forget what I was saying. Oh, yeah. Um, the reading of stage four cancer last night was odd um, because most of us of a particular age know what stage four cancer means without the Wikipedia. Yeah, well, I always think support starts close to home. Your support starts with your family first, right? Um, and your friends. And uh, it seemed from what I saw one had children who lived outside of the home, who were adults and had families of their own who had money who could support that person. So why you needed to go past that? I got help and support from within my own family and friends. I didn't have to go outside of that. The law, I don't even know how the laws work there in, in America. But, uh... Even the medical system, if you're stage four, you have resources and you're not going hungry. And yeah, it was just a lie. I mean, I was sitting there getting frustrated. Yeah, and it's like stage zero. Stage zero is just the discovery of abnormal cells that haven't mutated, haven't gone in, haven't spread. And you don't require a partial hysterectomy. And... You only can do it if it's your choice to have a hysterectomy, as in you're not going to have any more children. Otherwise, there's other things they do that are non-invasive. You don't go through chemo. You don't shave your head. It's frustrating because my aunt is stage four. It's very frustrating. And there's no way she'd be sitting there screaming and yelling like that. Yeah, well, there's different types of cancer and different levels, right? She had her diagnosis last year in October that she was stage four in that there was no help and that she was going to be put in pal palpative care. It's such a hard word. Uh, but they still gave her chemo and the chemo worked and it shrunk the tumor because the tumor... It was uterine cancer, but the tumor was not, was had grown somewhere else. So they got it out. They got the hysterectomy. Uh, she had to wait to be able to have all that. So once the chemo worked, but she still has questionable spots. She isn't clear, and she's she's um, her hair was starting to grow back after the treatment of chemo, but she's not in the clear. <laughs> yeah, mine's taking up space too. It decides it's gonna leak every month, and I'm like, hey, I'm done with this. When's menopause starting? Sorry, sorry for all you men in here. Pet scans or cat scans? I'm sure they do. We have everything you have. Yes. Oh. 
I'm your radio company. How cool. <laughs> that sounds nice. <laughs> No, we don't need your guns. We've got brains. We don't need guns. But you shoot cancer, huh? <laughs> you Americans are feisty little buggers. <laughs> feisty, feisty. The last two days, everyone has kept me up past my bedtime with these streams, I must say. <laughs> Hi. I'll finish this before. What is dinner? Oh, okay. I'll come in a little bit. Exactly. You're always paying cowboys down there. And we're up here all bundled up drinking our beers, snuggling our bears. Yes, Chaos Kitty, you're a perfect angel. <laughs> Just like me. On a good day. <laughs> I need to have a panel someday. Get a few people on or go into some other's chats and have a panel and really rip it up. <laughs> that'll be great I joined the gym I'm happy about that I've gained weight coming back here will you join Johnson can you join you'll go on a panel and talk Yeah, no. No drama. Just ripping it up. Having a good time. Apparently we ladies have bad reputation in our chats for some reason. The men don't like the way women talk. I thought that was a little bit funny. Apparently it's the tabloid. Tabloid streams. <laughs> I think people are abusing the word drama, though, because I think having just a topic of a conversation doesn't make it drama, even if, if it's controversial, it doesn't need to be, like, drama. You, I don't think you should have to be called drama just because you talk about, though, the people who shall not be named. I don't think that necessarily makes you drama to talk about it. No, none of us want to make her a platform. How come you admire women who have the nerve to stream? Because it's been ma mainly male dominated? Hey, but that's a good topic. Actual drama, theater. But there seems to be like this big gear right now to like take down people. Uh, like Peter Mon, just because he has a different opinion. I mean, this is this is getting sick and, and they need to make those cyber laws really strong because Oh uh, Well I've been working on this. I'm not as comfortable as other people doing this. Mm. There's a lot of hate out there and it's building and building for people. And I don't understand it. Yes, he would. Cats. They have good mu music in that Broadway show. I saw the Phantom of the Opera back in the 90s. I loved it. I really like Phantom. I, that's my go-to. <laughs> Which, you don't like the Broadway? You don't like cats?
<laughs> yeah, I think we all respect everyone who streams about except she who shall not be named. Are you semi-musical? Do you dance? Does a captain dance? Can you do a jig? <laughs> I haven't even been to Broadway. I walked through the West End there in England, but I didn't go in. I was with my kid. And he was 10, so there was no way he was going to go in and see a musical with me. That's a good attitude, Captain. <laughs> Everyone's home. Sorry, I knocked my painting table. Oh. I sing opera too, but poorly. It's fun. I actually took music, le uh, sorry, singing lessons when I was in high school. She fascinates you because she's a walking contradiction. Contradiction. What is Blood Brothers? People would pay you not to sing, or they would record you and then uh, watch you on YouTube. Yeah, do it, do it. Sing, sing. Can't do any worse. I think Bob left. <laughs> And I think that Michael left. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't even know what time it is. Oh my god. It's not even six o'clock at night. We're getting up early. Heading up into the interior of BC. It's minus 10 up there, so we're packing warm. I'm in the back seat stuck between my son and my mom for a four hour drive. Nice. Well, at least I'll be toasty warm, at least in the car, the truck. Feed the boys some beans for breakfast. I think he's growing enough. He's really tired. We think he's in another growth spurt. He's only 14, right? He's already taller than me. I keep saying, son, shrink back to being three so I can carry you around and snuggle you. And he's like, no. Please, son, I need, I need a little child to carry. Nope. He's having none of it. Oh, but he joined the gym with me. Minus 10 Celsius. Yeah, we have Celsius up here, so 10 below zero. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Cold. Cold. <laughs> hey, I'm not so bad to sit next to. I'm a good cuddler. And I'm warm. <laughs> He's joined the gym with us and uh, he's coming. The new year, because <laughs> I 
Any moment he'll let me have a hug, I grab that hug. Sticking up for the men, stick up for the boys. Every now and then he needs a hug from mom. But he doesn't want to go, like, he still needs me. I'm just not allowed to play dodgeball with him because apparently if I pay, play dodgeball, I'm going to embarrass him. <laughs> he has all sorts of weird rules. That's right. And my cat needs hugs all the time. She's very selfish. When I got my headphones on in the bed and I'm listening to live streams, that cat is on top of me trying to get in the way so I can't see. Yeah. But he'll be, he'll be a little bit ticked because there's no Wi-Fi at my Nana's. So. He gets to go on a hike up the mountain with me in the winter. Cold. Mine does every night. And then in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping, she kicks me off my pillow. She's fat. I don't know if I have, if you have me on Twitter, but I put pictures of her on my Twitter and she's fat. Cuddly and fat. Hi, Kirby. My cat does. My cat wants a lot of attention. She's not normal. <laughs> My cat likes to fart when she walks past. <laughs> I don't know who's live tonight. Are there more live streams going on right now? Ooh, MFW is going live tonight. Drama Live is going. Drama Live I know is going live tonight to talk about Peter Mon. Uh, I don't know, is, are there people live right now? I'm assuming all this, this she who shall not be named is still going to be stuff tonight. I'm assuming. I, I don't. I don't, I don't have a, I don't subscribe to the porch, so I only know when that's happening when it's on a Twitter feed. I hate Katie. I hate her so much that she keeps dragging me back in to watch her. I have a love-hate relationship with her. Yes, and she's probably gonna, <laughs> I mean it in the nicest way. Sometimes I want to strangle her, because she's like, what, 10 years younger than me, and I, she's like, I'm watching her, I'm like, stop it, stop it! And other times I'm like, eh, okay. I have not been getting notifications for Bless This Mess's streams. Lisa's a good little detective. I, I was impressed. I know, I am kind of a fan of her. I'm sorry, Katie. I made that video about you, but you needed a spanking. But I don't hate you. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Do you have a thing for nurses? <laughs> I usually would never have ever gone to the porch, but this was way too hard to not watch. Cray Cray has limits. My Nana was a nurse. And my aunt, my brother's, I'm sorry, my father's sister is a retired nurse. So we have nurses in our family. And yes, they're very important. Ashley Ashton's grandma, my ex-husband's mom, she's a RN in Finland. Oh, is it a fetish for you? Can't help you there. Oh, Kirby, I don't know if you found sanity here. I hope you do. Because you're right, there's a lot of cray-cray out there. And they all seem to gather in the same space, places. Gary, who are you talking to? I'm not in the UK. Isn't it like a syndrome or something? <laughs> I mean, I could have a fetish for a man in a three-piece suit or a uniform of some kind. I mean, it's not that bad. I'm not in the UK, I'm in Canada. Mm, 
Yeah, but didn't Crystal get banned a while ago? Hmm. I hope everything works out for Crystal because this has got to be um like insanity. Insanity for her. This crazy lady shows up at her work with the camera in her face and then her life just gets pulled into this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the UK, but I love the UK. I love it and I can't wait to go back. But I don't think I'm going to go until next 2019. Yeah, I really feel sorry. It's not cool what's happened. <laughs> exactly. We have parliament. You have parliament. But everyone's government is going nuts. I'm happy when there's no Trump in the news, which basically only happens when I fall asleep. Okay. I will not I will not come to the UK without that macaroni and cheese. I will make you that. Or you could fly over to Finland and they'll make it freely. Actually you can just show up in the grocery stores and buy some. <laughs> it won't be as good. I don't do politics, don't worry, Captain. I'm just saying it's nice when I don't have to hear about the Trump. Yeah, no problem. I prefer no politics. But the politics of entertainment is fun. Donald Fart. Am I the boss? Am I the boss man? <laughs> I went for a blood test. Hopefully my hemoglobin... <laughs> no problem, Kirby. Uh, a little while ago I got uh, a blood test and I was very anemic. Dangerously anemic and now I've been chopping back that iron supplements and... And hopefully my blood test comes back improved. I am not political. I am not nationalistic. I'm a human. All you need is love. Love, love. All you need is love. And a good contour. And a bright highlight. I believe in my constitution anytime I can have one. <laughs> it should. <laughs> Kirby, you're new. It's nice to have you. I didn't say that. Welcome to the alternative to the alternative oh that's awful Donna all right go do your moderator job your mod your wrenching pea and ham soup bye chaos pea and ham soup is good too yes My and my anemia started, uh, I guess, last year this time, and it got dangerously low. When I went into the doctors, they said you're dangerously low, and your vitamin D. And I've been trying to raise it, but it's not been so good. But now it should be much better. I will probably see you too, chaos. After I eat dinner, I am probably going to pop into whoever is streaming tonight. So I can get all the drama 
to hold me over for four days before I come back. Since we're not going to have a quiet holiday season. Uh, my sister made nachos. It's sun Saturday night. Nothing extreme, just some nachos. Have them at least once a week. Homemade, of course. Yes, I know, I need to go eat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not that bad yet. All my bees are okay. It was my iron that was really low. But you went out for dinner. Didn't you have a didn't you have a dinner party that you went to tonight there, Captain? Or was it restaurant food? I've had a hard time with the food here. There's so much hidden ingredients and sugar I gained a whole lot of weight, so this is why we've joined the gym. The food is a lot better. Yes, catered. Yeah, I can tell you as someone who has catered for weddings and things, there can be a lot of I don't know. Even though it's homemade food, it doesn't taste as good. You had a McFish. <laughs> I don't like McFishes. I like Big Macs. Me and Ashton went pepper bellies. Fru fru stuff. It was posh food, snotty food, appetizers, canapes. <laughs> ah, where did everybody go? I should go eat actually, so I will say goodbye. We've had a good evening. Hey, I like a penguin suit. Talk about a fetish. Penguin suits are awesome. I like penguin suits. I think men should wear them more often. I enjoy a dapper looking man, well groomed. Well groomed in a really nice suit. Really sharp shoes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're welcome. I had a, a really good evening, too. I'm not scared anymore, but, uh, I, is drama live on now, or is it going to be on soon? So I can eat and go in there. Your cat has a penguin suit. Oh, you have a black and white cat. Hmm. <laughs> okay yes but you'll see me around I'm always popping up <gasps> white boots we call them socks white socks mm -hmm. I like kitties but my favorite ele animal is an elephant so you know one more new thing about me I love elephants but oh for domestic animals, I'll take a cat. I love cats. Yep, see you later, Joe. See you later, everybody. I have to stop talking because every time I say I'm going to stop talking, I can't read on for 10 more minutes. But I should go eat and see y'all. Bye, Kirby. Thanks, sir. <gasps> okay, now I'm really jealous of you, Donna. My cousins got to ride them and um, groom them in Africa at a habitat for them. <laughs> I have to watch for moose and deer. Okay, night night captain and everybody will probably see over in Drama Live if if you can even see comments in there. Thank you, you too. Have a good holiday. <laughs> Christ man, oh, I saw what you did there. I saw what you did. <laughs> Night everybody. <laughs>